Hash browns are a breakfast staple that are much simpler in theory than practice. Follow these tips and you'll produce the perfect potato patty every time. Hash browns are almost completely made up of potatoes, so it stands to reason that you should choose your spuds wisely before frying them up in the morning. To be clear, we're not talking about just differentiating sweet potatoes from white potatoes. As far as we're concerned, sweet potato hash is in a category of its own and cannot be classified as part of the hash browns family. Just in the realm of white potatoes, there is a lot of variability in texture in particular. Broadly speaking, there are two categories, waxy and starchy. For hash browns, you want the starchiest potatoes you can find. Waxy potatoes have less starch and higher water content, both of which make them less inclined to get crispy. Starchy potatoes, however, will give you all the crispiness you could ask for. They do not hold their shape as well as waxy potatoes, and while this makes them slightly more difficult to work with, it does make for that irresistibly tender center that marks a good hash brown. When shopping for starchy potatoes, russet potatoes should be at the top of your list. Also known as Idaho potatoes, you'll recognize them as the stereotypical baked potato. And when it comes to making hash browns, we could do no better. One of the many pitfalls of making the perfect hash browns is having either too much or too little starch. Russet potatoes are the best option because their abundant starch granules swell and burst when exposed to heat, creating that heavenly crispy layer on the outside. However, too much starch can lead to a gummy texture, making the potato strands gooey rather than fluffy. To avoid having to choose between these two extremes, you need to soak the potatoes before cooking them. Doing so removes the excess starch, which means you won't have to resort to a waxier variety of potatoes that has too little of it. After washing, peeling, and grating the potatoes, put them in a colander and run cold water through them until it runs clear. This step only takes an extra minute or two and is the first opportunity you have to promote the potato's crispiness. Each step builds on the next, and starting strong with a thorough rinse will set the rest of the cooking process up for success. You want your hash browns to be crunchy, but not because they're raw. Uncooked potatoes are bitter and unappetizing and bear no resemblance to the fluffy, browned hash browns you devour in restaurants. However, it's easy to end up with raw potatoes when you make hash browns at home, especially if your pan is too hot and you're worried about burning the outside. To mitigate the risks of raw potatoes, we recommend pre-cooking them in the microwave for two minutes. Don't worry, this won't turn them into mash. All it does is ensure that once they hit the pan, your only concern is crisping the outside, not cooking the inside. Once you've washed the excess starch off the grated potatoes, microwave them for two minutes, keeping in mind that more time does not equal better results. If you microwave them for too long, your hash browns will turn out dry rather than crispy. If you don't have a microwave or would prefer not to use it, you can parboil the potatoes before grating them. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. This can take about 15 to 20 minutes, but it does the job. Make sure to keep a close eye on your spuds while they're boiling. You don't want to let them get too tender. If you do choose to parboil the potatoes instead of zapping them in the microwave, simply adding vinegar can vastly improve the quality of your hash browns. It doesn't have to be fancy vinegar either. For quality breakfast potatoes, you don't need to go out and get apple cider vinegar or red wine vinegar. Distilled white vinegar will do the trick perfectly. The reason this works wonders is because it prevents the potatoes from falling apart as soon as you try to fry them. As potatoes cook, pectin, the gluey substance that holds them together, breaks down, reducing whole spuds into mushy lumps. In that state, by the time you try to grate and fry them, it will be nearly impossible to form the result into evenly shaped patties. Vinegar makes the pectin break down more slowly, which allows the potatoes to boil sufficiently without falling apart. Be careful though, just one tablespoon of vinegar per quart of water is enough. If you get carried away with it, you might end up with vinegar-flavored hash browns. Aside from a lack of starch, moisture is another important factor to consider while trying to achieve crispy hash browns. Excess liquid is a recipe for sogginess. You should do everything you can to dry the potatoes before frying them. Drain it. it might sound like backward logic to go through the trouble of soaking and boiling potatoes just to dry them off afterward. But the key to hash brown success lies in the balance between starch, moisture, and oil. The best way to get rid of the liquid is to put the grated potatoes in a kitchen towel or piece of cheesecloth and squeeze. You can also put them back in the colander and compress them by hand to get the water out. For a final moisture-busting measure, pat the potatoes with a dry cloth or paper towel. Luckily, not all the steps involved in making the crispiest hash browns require more time and effort. 
A simple nonstick pan is one of the best ways to ensure your creation holds together and gets nice and crispy. Its coating will minimize the need for excessive oil, allowing the natural sugars in the potatoes to caramelize and turn golden brown and crispy. If you don't use nonstick cookware, a cast iron skillet is also an excellent option. One of the risks of not using a nonstick skillet is that the hash browns will stick to the surface, making it impossible to flip or extricate them without leaving behind the crust. Not only will this create a mess in your pan, it will also rob you of the most delicious part of the hash browns. The other danger of not using a nonstick or cast iron skillet is that you may be inclined to cook them at a low temperature to prevent sticking. While this will probably achieve your stick-free goal, it will not produce a crispy outer layer. Instead, the oil will seep into the potatoes, making them greasy and soggy. Preheating is a game changer when it comes to making a crispy browned crust. If you've ever found that your first pancake is always the worst, the reason for this is because the pan probably needed more time to heat up. When a pan is too cool, the inside of your food will finish cooking before the outside has a chance to brown. You will either be forced to continue cooking it and accept that the inside will be overcooked, or take it off heat and end up with a pale, rubbery exterior. This is particularly noticeable when cooking steak, where a pink center and a hard crust are essential. In addition to these factors, while cooking potatoes and other vegetables, cooking on a low temperature will steam the spuds with their internal moisture rather than saute them. To gauge whether your pan is hot enough, flick a few drops of water onto it. They should pop, sizzle, and quickly evaporate. If they don't, wait another 30 seconds and try again. If you're using a cast iron skillet, the preheating process will take longer, but the material will retain heat better and you will get a thicker, darker crust with more uniform results. There are so few ingredients in hash browns that it's worth being selective about each one you use. Plenty of recipes call for vegetable oil or butter, and while these will produce decent results, rendered animal fat will give you the kind of knock-your-socks-off flavor and crispiness that you're dreaming of. If you can get your hands on a jar of duck fat, beef tallow, or lard, you are almost guaranteed to have the best-tasting hash browns you've ever made. Saturated fat is usually highlighted for its health risks, but there is no getting around the fact that it is the hero ingredient in hash browns. There are several reasons for this. For one thing, it has a higher smoke point than butter, which means you can cook with hotter oil and yield crispier hash browns. Many vegetable oils have higher smoke points than animal fats do, but they cannot match their flavor. Refined vegetable oils are robbed of their flavor during processing, while the delicate aroma compounds and volatile fatty acids in unrefined vegetable oils are killed off when exposed to high heat. Animal fats, in contrast, develop richer, more complex flavors when cooked because oxidation creates new flavor compounds. Hash browns come in all shapes and sizes, but there are some rules of thumb to follow if you want them to be crispy. First and foremost, avoid crowding the pan, either by adding too many patties or by making them too thick. In order to get the distinctive crust, the potatoes have to undergo the Maillard reaction, a chemical reaction between amino acids and reducing sugars that creates everything from the crispy dark crust on seared steaks to the fragrant brown crunchiness on toast. In addition to making food crispy and browned, it also alters its flavor by breaking down and rearranging some of its chemical bonds. For the reaction to occur, the food needs to cook at a high enough temperature to rapidly evaporate the moisture in the potatoes. Much like when cooking with a cool pan, piling too many potatoes in the pan brings down the temperature and traps steam, causing the hash browns to steam in their own moisture and preventing the Maillard reaction from occurring. For the best results, leave space between the hash browns so that you can see the bottom of the pan between them, and make sure they are no more than a half inch thick to avoid excessive moisture. Compared to something like baking a cake, cooking hash browns is not exactly a lengthy process. However, you certainly don't want to rush their prep or you'll end up with undercooked, floppy results. Even worse, if you try to speed it up by overheating the pan, you'll end up with charcoal. Try not to move the patties around while you wait for them to cook. Just press them with your spatula and wait at least 60 seconds before gently lifting an edge to see if it's browning. Once it's reached the color and texture of your choosing, gently flip it and leave the other side to cook undisturbed. Try not to flip them too soon, as they need to sizzle to form that protective crunchy layer that keeps out excess oil. If you flip them too early or cook them more than once on each side, you may end up with oil-logged potatoes. One of the biggest mistakes you can make with hash browns is not draining the grease once they've been cooked. 
It's easy to forget this step when you've just produced the crispiest, fluffiest hash you've ever seen and want to dig right in. But those crunchy edges are likely to turn soggy with grease if you don't put them on paper towels first. Draining the oil is almost as important as the cooking itself when it comes to ensuring the desired texture. And if you're used to deep frying foods, you'll know that it's a non-negotiable part of the process. While you're waiting for the hash browns to cook, put several layers of paper towels on your counter. Once the hash browns have finished cooking, transfer them immediately to the paper towels for a minute or two, and make sure to flip them to remove grease from both sides. If the pan has a layer of oil on the bottom, you might want to drain the hash browns on cooling racks instead, as paper towels may be insufficient. The window of time when your hash browns are crispy is frustratingly brief. Despite being dried before cooking, the potatoes will still have moisture in them, and even after you remove them from the heat, they will continue to steam. If you seal them in a container with the intention of serving them later, that steam will get trapped and sink straight back into the potatoes like water into a sponge. The best solution is to serve them immediately after putting them on paper towels to get rid of the extra grease, but this can be an issue if you're cooking multiple batches and want to serve them all at the same time. In this case, you can transfer the hot hash browns to your oven. Set the temperature at 200 degrees Fahrenheit to keep the steam rising rather than condensing back into liquid. The steam will also keep the oil from seeping into the crust and turning it soggy with grease.